final powwow. That's great, thank you. So um, I've just got a few words. This will not drag on. You know me. So the first thing I'd like to do is that I would like to thank the systems staff for the, all the hard work that they put in for making such a great meeting, and that includes Marlene, Albert, Eric, Scott, Irina, Faye, Stephanie, Ben, Chad, and anyone else who helped put, oh, Kimberly, thank you. Kimberly, I always forget your name. What's your last name again, Rogers? Okay. <laughs> so please give them a warm uh, hand. And Chris, that's right, Chris, geez. Okay. So the second thing I would like to do is that I would like to thank the participants, you all, for your amazing posters, talks, clinics, uh, and the great discussion. I think that this, my impression, and I don't hold back, you've set a new bar and uh, compared to our previous meetings, and I only hope we can continue to maintain this in the years forward because the bar is really high. The keynote speakers were state-of-the-art and giving a state-of-the-art talk is can be intimidating for someone else to hear because they think oh my god you know is that what I should be doing but I think it's really good and it's also good to see the state-of-the-art in another field not all fields are at the same place and, and I, th I thought that was v very interesting and the clinics you know, we're also, one of the reasons I think everyone comes and we get probably 50% new people showing up at any given meeting is that there's an educational component and I've sat in every one of the clinics, not at the same time, but that would be godlike. Um, but I sat in and I, I was truly amazed at the uh, cleverness and, um, and content of what was being delivered, and I hope you all appreciate uh, the clinic uh, uh, teachers. Uh, fabulous stuff. And on that subject, keynotes is kind of easy. We look down who came the previous years. We want to make sure we reach out to the chairs of the various groups and say, you know, is there somebody, some aspect of your community that you would like to recognize and highlight at our meeting. I mean, that's a relatively easy thing to do. Uh, the clinics, though, there's some nuance here because we've given some clinics before and we gave them this time and this time there's three times as many as the first time. So we can repeat clinics through popular demand. And I've had feedback from some of you saying, why did you put two of the favorite clinics that I wanted to attend at the exact same time? Well, almost everyone can say that on every day. So that's the problem is that you're all different. But so, but you know, if you want another clinic, uh, if you want an, another open foam clinic or you want another NumPy clinic, you know, that we need feedback. And it may not happen every year, but we certainly need the feedback to allow these uh, world leading experts, these uh, people to plan for it. Um, we needed the discussion. Uh, some people said, you know, maybe we didn't, it didn't have to be so long, the discussion groups. But we thought that, you know, we're setting up uh, Systems 2.0 for the next five years. We thought we needed to get this uh, input from everybody. Uh, and so that's why it was a little longer. I don't know if it needs to be this long in the future. Something for the executive committee to talk about. But this is where you yourselves need to provide feedback to the chairs. Don't hold back. Let them know your thoughts. And on talking to all of you now as participants, I want to remind you that this is a community effort. So please continue to support systems and the development of these strategic plans, I was pleasantly surprised to see the summaries this morning 
from the chaos of yesterday and the, the day before. So, but there will be some words that I'm sure they'll want you to uh, comment on. This will be a moment you can reflect, edit, don't hold back. And we, uh, hopefully that message can go out to those who couldn't attend this particular time and would like to contribute to the strategic plans. Um, these strategic plans are, are um, what's the word? They're, they're, um, they're rolling. So they can be updated, they can be changed, but um, please contribute today. I'd like to uh, thank the one and only sponsor for this particular meeting, the National Science Foundation. In the past, we've had other sponsors, and in the future, I hope to have other sponsors. So uh, it shouldn't all fall on the uh, backs of the National Science Foundation, but uh, they deserve our applause. And Paul Cutler, you can receive it today from all of us. Thank you. And we'll, we'll try to get some of those other rascals to uh, dig into their pockets. So we're at that stage where we had a lively discussion last year on thinking we were going to go to Vancouver or London or something like that, if you remember. I've been looking forward to the, this, this discussion all week. Um, so the reason we had it today was that the fiscal year that was Systems 1.0 ends in a few days, and we needed to spend our money. So we had it today, uh, or the weekend. But we don't have to have it in March. Our new fiscal year starts in October the 15th or whenever it is, it's sometime in the fall. So we could have the next year's meeting at another month, like April or things. So I just, we can do this as a show of hands. Who likes March? Who likes April? Who likes May? Who likes June? <laughs> you're all pathetic. <laughs> OK, so you're not helping. Uh, so then there's uh, uh, where. So So, OK, so we won't get any more money from the National Science Foundation to do this. So. So to hold it, not hold it here, will cost more money and less people will be able to come, or the people who do come will get less money to come. So that's uh, a reason why to hold it here. But I'm just putting out some realities there. If a European, oh, you're not Europe, you're Britain. Um, LAUGHTER Sorry, uh, <laughs> but, if, but if, if there could be another source of money that would make throw in 50 to $80,000, then I'm sure we could have it in Sicily. So, but that would take some, I'd, I'd need a hero or two who would be willing to work to find that money. So you don't have to make that decision now, but it would be great if we held it outside of uh, Boulder. I'm just saying that. It's just that we are logistically constrained holding it here now. And since there's a fair number of people from the area here, they get there's no transportation cost or hotel cost. They, the cost of the meeting would rise. So the comment was, and I'll just repeat it, that uh, it may be a little US centric, but uh, we're pretty central to the US in terms of the East Coasters and the West Coasters getting to a place without too long a flight going to one place or another. That was the comment. Facility. <laughs> yeah, well, that was. Uh, March is our snowiest month. <laughs> yes. Pardon? Yeah, uh, I can, but I'll have to repeat what you say because they're recording this. 
But if you go to the microphone, they'll pick you up. Is this working? Yeah. yeah. I agree, Bolt is a fantastic facility, and I love to come here. My only reason for suggesting somewhere foreign is it might behoove us to engage more foreigners uh, at some point, um, particularly in Asia. And Sicily was somewhat of a facetious comment. It would love to go to Sicily, but there may be reasons to go to Asia um, to pick up a, a significantly larger and different scientific community that we don't engage with enough. Boulder has a, the, the overwhelming attraction of having local experts like Gary Clow, who could come and talk about Wharf today, and others like him. So that, I mean, there are huge attractions of Boulder, and I love Boulder. But maybe for two or three years down the road, we, we should seriously think about. So we'll, we'll talk about this at the steering committee and the executive committee. But one of the ways that may be forward is rather than somebody just suggesting this out of the blue like you, uh, that we, we actually have a call for those who might wish to host it someplace and they would have the wherewithal then to try to raise the necessary resources to make that a reality. And that way, um, it's not just a casual idea, but it has some substance. And that's how we do it in a number of other organizations that I am associated with. It. OK, we're, we're almost at the end. So another question. We've had this every year, but it comes down to those who love weekends and those that don't. So I, I once again, a show of hands, those that thought that this was an advantage to them to have it on a Saturday and Sunday. Just, just hold it up as we actually want to count this one. OK, 30. And those that find this a nuisance. Less preferable. <laughs> yeah. So once again, this doesn't help. <laughs> OK. So I want to leave you um, with a couple of thoughts. That the first is a quote from Albert Einstein, if, for those of you who know who he is. He said, if we knew what we were doing, they wouldn't call it research. So I. And that gets me to the point where it's really important when I said this, and this is probably why I'm bringing it up now. I just said it in one of the working groups. But it's really important when a model fails. You know, it's nice to show that, yes, I met some sort of target, and now that I have a tsunami model that Noah will love. But it's really nice when it fails, and you have already put in all the physics that you think work. And these failures are what advance science. Science is advanced on failures. And somehow, we always seem to be reluctant to talk about the failures. The push this year was on uncertainty to try to get everyone to have that on their radar screen, that we'd like to have uh, to not hide behind the uncertainty that's in modeling. I know that this same conversation could go on for those that are talking about data and all of the uncertainty associated with data. But somehow we all have to, when we have keynote talks, we would like these world experts to talk about A, what they don't know, and B, uh, you know, where they think they need to go in terms of reducing their uncertainty and what it is. Do they have any idea what their model uncertainty is? So that was the thrust. Uh, we had a couple of other semi-themes. One was uh, Wan Sak Kim, which I still feel bad that I beat him up. But you know, talking about uh, experiments and data, I think this is low-hanging fruit, where this is an ever-increasing, uh, growing group who are doing excellent research. They need modelers. He didn't voice it in a way that I would have liked to, him to do, but I'm going to do it for him. 
is that one of the ways the experimentalists can best show the advantage of what they're doing is through models. We can scale to the models, and the models can scale to the real world. And that's where this magic can really happen. What they do in their tank experiments, their flume experiments, they can deal with the chaos and noise and um, what do they call it? Uh, not, is it autocyclic responses? Internal responses, allocyclic? Auto, autocyclic, thank you, thank you. They can get that, we almost never get that in our models. So they can, they can advance science in ways that we can't. And so that's where the two groups can really um, have some fruit. We've had four groups that have come up for the very first time and talked to each other. And we want to go big with this, with the larger thousand person system community. And that's the geodynamics. They are not given an opportunity to say what they've discussed, but you'll soon read about it. But geodynamics, coastal vulnerability, um, the critical zone, focus research group, and the Anthropocene. So we want everyone in this room and we want the larger community to support these new initiatives too. I think it's really important for us to grow, not to forget where, what we're, where we're coming from and what our support is, but the reason these initiatives are there is that others within National Science Foundation and elsewhere are saying they would like us to reach out and move in these kind of directions. So. Um, Please support them and their activities also. And with that, is there anything else? Anyone want to say anything? Yes, add. Yeah. Thank you for last year. Thank you for this year. <laughs> uh, OK. So the comment is, you, you can say it again. We've got a microphone. What did I say? Uh, you, you said uh, longer time and follow up. Exactly. Thank you. And uh, the other point I wanted to make was that uh, you talked about the modelers and um, the uh, experimentalists working in labs. I think to solve the problems, you also really need to pull in the people that do field measurements. Yeah. I mean, that's another party that needs to be part of this. Yeah, uh, good point, and that's why, and in, in part, we're having the new CZO or CZ focus research group. So, other comments. Now's the time to. We're recording all this, so talk in the mic so it's recorded for posterity. I wanted to say that I enjoyed the student talks a lot, and I thought that was a nice addition. Yes, and this was the first time we had a, a call for student scholarships, and we had I don't know whether it was twelve or fifteen. Um, scholarships awarded to get students here, and I think that's really important. Yes. Other comments? I still don't see I'm the one of the recipients of the scholarship. I yes. would like to um, appreciate. Uh, I learned a lot from the um, the meeting, the workshop, the clinics, and I hope uh, everyone here will have a very good uh, time in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. <laughs> Other comments. I'm so surprised Rudy's not saying anything, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to give Jim a round of applause for for doing this. James, I should say. Let's have a round of applause for James. Thank you. So with that, I now call the meeting to a close.